my name is Celia, I'm from UC Berkeley, and this is The Handlebar. So jumping straight into the issue that we're trying to address with this device, and that is of stairs. Um, there's about 54 million homes in the U.S. that have stairs, and uh, that can pose a problem because uh, a majority of the falls, elderly falls, occur in the homes, and of those falls in the home, about 10% of that occurs on the stairs. Now, 10% might not sound like a lot, um, but when you think about it, you don't spend 10% of your day on the stairs, going up on the stairs on any given day. So if you think about that sort of imbalance and proportion, um, it kind of implies that stairs do pose a greater risk um, for the elderly. And not only that, uh, many of the more serious falls, so sort of hip fractures, shoulder fractures, and also the more fatal injuries are the ones that occur on the stairs. So how do we come to this realization? Um, let me back up and tell a little bit about our story. So I'm one of four people on our team. All four of us are seniors in bioengineering, undergrads at UC Berkeley. And we were taking a senior uh, capstone design course where we're assigned a real world problem and we're supposed to go out and sort of innovate a solution to it. So we were assigned to Dr. Janice Schwartz from UCSF Geriatrics and uh, our task was to sort of follow her around and also observe the elderly in the homes and see if there was anything that we could help them with. So we went on house call visits and also senior living communities and nursing homes and what we found um, was that there was a group of people um, that were living independently, so in their own homes. And they were still relatively mobile, but they were starting to lose that sense of depth perception, and uh, their balance was starting to get a little weaker. So uh, the stairs were becoming a little bit risky for them. And to give an example, that is one of the people that we visited uh, in our house calls. That's Mr. Lewis there, and um, we were at his house in San Francisco, and we were watching him sort of move around the house. And what was interesting, was when he was trying to get out to the back door, uh, to the backyard. So uh, he has his walker with him at all times, and when he needed to go out to the backyard, he has to go up to the door with his walker. Then he needs to grab the door handle, shuffle backwards with his walker, then push the walker out the door first. And keep in mind that walker is his constant support. So now his walker is all the way outside, and then he grabs the handle, which is that right there, and that's a very unnatural position to be in, right, because he's sort of bent over. Um, and slowly sort of stepping down, just two steps down into the backyard to find his walker again. And so that's when we realize that stairs actually pose a great difficulty. And um, for that reason, he's also homebound. So the picture on the left, that's the front of his house, very typical of uh, homes in San Francisco, right? So um, I don't know if you can see it, but the door is not on the first floor, it's on the second floor. And so there's no way for him to get out of the house at all. So he can't really leave his home. Um, so that's when we realized that stairs was our task. We need to figure out to sort of innovate a solution around this. So with that, we moved on to the brainstorming steps. So we had sticky notes all over the walls, each with a different design, and we compared them and we combined them until we had one main idea that we really liked, and that is this. Um, what if we had a bar coming out of the wall by the stairs um, that would walk with you when you needed to walk? But if you accidentally trip, or if you need to sort of lean on something for balance, um, that bar will lock in place. And uh, it locks firmly, you can lean on it however long you need to, and when you're ready to go, then you walk again, and the bar will slide smoothly again. And that was the very beginning of our handlebar. So what did we do with that idea? We decided to try and make it. So those are pictures of our first prototype. We made all of that ourselves. And that's actually from our testing phase, so we uh, nailed it into the outside of Eric's wall. Um, Eric's one of our teammates. Um, and so we're testing it there, uh, and just sort of trying to see what's the force required to lock, and sort of how heavy it is if you're trying to push it up the stairs. So we did all of that testing, and we also brought it back to the folks at UCSF, and we also brought the idea to sort of uh, elders that we found in sort of clinics around the area, and we said, what do you think about this idea? Um, so we got a lot of good, positive comments, and we also got a lot of feedback about ways to improve it and make it better. So we also um, made a second prototype. Um, so those are the sketches. They don't look half as good as a real thing, which is right there. Um, so if you guys have a chance, please do come over and take a look at it, and we'd be happy to explain sort of the locking mechanism of it. There's basically two gears that are kept apart to slide, and then if you push down, then it locks. So. Why the handlebar? Why did we bother making this device when 
products already exist on the market. Um, as we were designing this device, we uh, surveyed current products on the market, and we wanted the handlebar to stand out in one particular way, and that is it still allows the user to walk. Um, versus the stair lift or the elevator where it completely bypasses the act of walking, the handlebar still allows the person to actually physically walk on the stairs. Um, and that came up because in one of our interviews, uh, one of the seniors that we were talking to said, stairs are my only form of exercise. Um, and she actually had a stair lift installed, so we asked her, so you don't really use a stair lift? She's like, no, I never use it, it's too slow. <laughs> so uh, this is really good for that sort of transition period where you're aging in place and you're still relatively mobile, but those stairs are starting to get risky for you. And so um, the handlebar would be there sort of as a security measure and would give family members peace of mind to know um, that that bar is there just in case if the aid not around or if the person is living alone, that handlebar is there just in case if the person trips or anything like that, then um, that bar is sort of there for support. Um, there's a lot of other advantages to the handlebar. Um, for example, it's very ergonomic. It stays in front of you and it's centered versus a cane where you sort of have to lean on it on one side to go up. Um, it's very intuitive to use, and it's also a lot cheaper than the stair lift, right? Because there's no giant motor to power it up. You don't need an electrical outlet. So you just install it by your wall, and it just stays like that. It's very simple, very elegant. Um, right before I end, I want to also thank uh, all the fine people that are listed on here. Of course, um, our mentors from Home Care Assistance for giving me feedback on this presentation. And of course, um, Dr. Schwartz and Dr. Ritchie and all the folks at UCSF that are gracious enough to let us shadow them uh, for this project. And um, with that, yeah. everybody, thank you so much thank for your attention. Much. For you, and that is um, lighting. Do you have uh, anything on it for in, in the evening as you're walking up? Maybe the lighting's a little bit diminished. They don't have the house lighting all yeah, the way. Yeah, actually, we do. <laughs> um, that was one of the things that was brought up. So, in the dark, maybe at the middle of the night, if someone needs to go down to the bathroom or something like that, um, our prototype actually has. Uh, I think we took for our, it was sort of rough prototyping, so we got bicycle lights. And it's actually nailed in, uh, kind of pushed in as a group. You can totally come and take a look at it. Um, right now it's battery powered, um, but we could definitely make sort of uh, adjustments to it so it's a little more easy to use, like a switch or something like that, but yeah. Secondly, have you thought about creating an exercise program around it? <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. It was sort of a very practical solution to preventing falls, but we definitely could, yeah. And I think that would be of really at the nice. Bottom of the stairs. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Definitely. Okay, thank you. More questions from the judges, or we can open it up to the audience. Uh, we have Hi, uh, Jeff Kalka, ARP. Um, so, how far along are you in your development path? Are you in towards commercialization, and what what do you see as being your primary distribution channel? Primary? What? Sorry. D uh, distribution channel. How are, you gonna, how are you going to sell it? Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Sorry, I'm an engineering major, so this is a <laughs> So, uh, I think we're actually, it's mostly done. The basics are kind of down. We have the locking mechanism down really well. And mostly it's down to sort of tweaking the friction, so how smoothly we want it to slide. Because if it slides too smoothly, if you're going downhill, we don't want that thing to be flying down the stairs, right? So, uh, it's fixing that and also sort of optimizing the compression of the springs, so how hard do you have to push down to kind of get it to lock. And it, we may want to customize it for a weight of the person, right? Um, so things like that. Uh, the rough prototype is there. It's pretty much functional. We may want to add a couple more gadgets like grips on the handlebar, but small things like that to make it even cooler. But in general, it's mostly done. Um, in terms of where to go afterwards, I think the first step is to check um, with the university, because this started as a class course, so it technically the invention might belong to the university, so we might get go through. It might depend on the school as well. So, um, so that first, and then before we move on to patent searches and figuring out whether or not to patent. Great. Yeah. Question. Uh, I'm uh, June Fisher, and I'm probably the oldest person in this audience, and I have 32 steps. So, thank you for thinking about this. <laughs> but I have a serious question to ask you, because when I go down and I'm going outside, I have to have my walking sticks and my canes, and I'm not sure that I would be able to 
Right. Right. That we are right. we still have all of that. So have you addressed that? Yeah, actually, it was in our original design, but we didn't get to it in the prototype. But um, should I go back? Uh, we could totally nail a hook into the um, bar. So you would sort of you could put your purse on there, you could put your cane on there, um, and you would just sort of hang. It's like a hanger to go with the bar. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've got one more minute for a question in the back. Hi, I'm uh, Chris Scott, uh, Stanford Center for Biomedical Ethics. I study longevity research. My question has to do with your testing of up versus down. Have you found that uh, moving up is any less or more effective than actually moving down? You've got gravity working in one. Right, yeah, so with our first prototype, uh, if you take a look at the pictures, the first one was really heavy, and so going up was a whole lot harder than going down. Um, but in our second prototype, one of the things, one of the main things we focused on was sort of shaving off material. So now I think it's, it went from, I think, 20 pounds to 5 pounds. So something a lot lighter. And so I think even if there is a little bit of a difference in weight, it won't be that huge. Um, we'd have to do more tests to sort of verify that, though. Okay, well, I think with that, we are on track for coffee break. So, congratulations, Randall.